My name is Vicki Beamon, and it's been my extreme pleasure to be with Mary Ellen Kish to be the education chair for a couple of years. She recommended me. Thank you, Ellen. Thank you, Mary Ellen. It's been quite an honor. It really has been an honor. We're uh, getting ready to move ahead. Thank you, sir. Can you review the sign? She got judges there. Hey. Okay. Uh, it's been my extreme pleasure, and I'm really honored that you can present German Shepherd Dogs to you. The people on the first row represent students of the breed. <clears throat> Most of them are judges who judge other breeds, and we want to especially welcome you to the German Shepherd Dogs. <laughs> just quickly, starting on that end with Ms. Sanchez, quickly just to name and what breed, if any, that you judge, if you will go down the line real quick, okay? Australian Shepherds is my primary breed. And your name um, is? Sherry Sanchez. I live here in Colorado. Okay. About three and a half hours south of here. Right. Um, I have seven herding, seven hounds, and two terrier. Great. I'm Joyce Siddell, also Australian Shepherds. I have three herding and eight working. Wow. Okay. I'm Susie Van Tech Long, and I'm just That's right. That's right. You two? We're just getting the road, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, Amy Corby, I do the Hound Group, the Hound Sporting Group, and I'll try to check her. Okay. And my partner in crime today is Sharon Dwyer Newcomb. She's had German Shepherd dogs about as long as I have, which was about the time Moses parted the water, so I'm yeah. not sure. Yeah. <laughs> I think we had telephones back then. <laughs> We're honored to have two special guests with us, and I'm going to ask them to say just a couple of words to you. These are the judges that our club and our fancy has selected to judge our breed, our national. This is an extreme honor, and I would like first the dog judge to come forward, Mr. Bob Drescher, and just welcome you. You can ask him any questions anytime throughout this entire weekend. If he's not judging, and you can catch him because he's pretty clear foot. <laughs>
Uh, there are a lot of nuances to the standard, um, as, as Bob mentioned, temper is very important. Um, <coughs> we, we do a lot of movement, but <coughs> Bob mentioned this too, there's a lot of other things that are important. The dog has to be athletic, um, <coughs> sound, uh, and have that look of evil. So, um, <coughs> happy to answer any questions you guys have. Maybe not, it's not always the easiest to judge because there's a lot of aspects that are important. I'm going to give you a brief agenda of what we're going to cover today. We're going to look at a little bit of the history of the German Shepherd dog, influential German Shepherd dogs in, in our breed, and then the standard structure, body, movement, and temperament. I think that one of the main things that we have to remember, and I believe it was Dave Rinke, correct me if I'm wrong, it may have been one of you back there, coined the phrase that it should look like a shepherd, act like a shepherd, and move like a shepherd. So that's the things we're going to discuss today. <coughs> Max von Stefanitz is widely regarded as the father of the breed, okay? He wanted to um, establish the grand design for a breed that would be the ultimate working machine. He was passionate about this and thought that it was extremely important that these dogs have working ability. He developed the dog originally as sheep herding dogs. They were tending dogs. And he had the wisdom to see as time went on that <coughs> this was being phased out by technology <coughs> and just in some extent to other breeds. And the dog now has become, our breed has become synonymous with the term police dog. We're an all-purpose dog. We do law enforcement, we do military, we do sheep herding. We can do all of the AKC sports, we do therapy dog work. This should be the ultimate, the ultimate working dog. Um, <clears throat> first registered dog was Horan von Brackworth. They look a little different now, although we still have the four legs of two years. <laughs> <laughs> this was another dog that was influential. Um, he was uh, a Seeger back in the beginning of the breed. Uh, this, this <coughs> von Stefan has founded the German, the SV, first breed club for German Shepherd dogs in Germany. They established a breed standard and a register. Um, and then 20 years later, they started what we call the breed survey, which outlined the suitability for breeding on physical and mental characteristics. <coughs> Just a quick byline, <laughs> the first German Shepherd dog was exhibited in America in 1907. In 1913, the first championship was awarded. The first, the German Shepherd Dog Club was also founded in 1913. And the first specialty show was held in Greenwich, Connecticut in 1915. <coughs> the American Kennel Club changed the name of the breed to Shepherd, from Shepherd Dog to the German Shepherd Dog Club. At the German Shepherd, and we founded the German Shepherd Dog Club, German Shepherd Dog Club of America. <coughs> After World War I, uh, the German use of the dogs as war dogs resulted in a new appreciation for the breed. Uh, their utility was, was widely sought after. Uh, the Rin Tin Tin and Strong Heart movies made them household names and extremely popular. Uh, unfortunately, that flooded the market with some sub su less than superior animals at that time. Um, and after World War II, the Shepherd dog was sought after during, war, <coughs> during the World Wars and by the armed forces and the Axis forces. <coughs> detector dogs, sentinels, guard work, messengers, and other services. Um, today, they're widely sought after as patrol dogs and as detection dogs. Some of the more prominent early breeders <coughs> was uh, Mrs. Eustace of Fortunate Fields. And I don't know if all of you in this room have read the book, Working Dogs. <coughs> <coughs> Humphreys. Has anyone read the book? It was an excellent story of fortunate fields where they sought to produce the ultimate working dog in this country and they quantified a great many criteria. Thank you. I feel killing it for some reason. They quantified a lot of um, criteria that we don't even think about so much today. <coughs> but it was important and it, it's an excellent book. I think you would enjoy it. Some other famous breeders were Larry Leary, Lord Bracken, <coughs> Grant Mann, and the Hesses. In 1937, 
This seizure until 1955, one year after the death of Bob Stephan, as the title of seizure was ended in its place, was a dog um, that was placed with the, what we now call the VA in Germany. These were prominent dogs that came from, <coughs> they were German dogs in the breeding, of, in the development of the breed. <coughs> Two imports that were particularly critical to the breed in America were told by Richterbach and burned by Kellengarten. They were widely used. The new era came about with the arrival of a dog named Lance Franjo and also a dog named Alcala's Mine. These dogs were heavily used and influenced the breed tremendously. The one thing that should be remembered always is that this is a working breed. <coughs> if I implore you to remember anything, <coughs> it's that this breed was developed to be a working breed, a breed that could do it all. This means the dog must be physically sound, he must be mentally sound. He must not have deficiencies in nerves, <coughs> and he must be able to perform a task. And there are many, many tasks that this dog can do with many different types of temperament, but the overriding, most important things that you can have are bit ability. That means the dog's ability to be trained, his willingness to work with you. He must have environmental soundness. He must not be timid on thick slip floors. He must not be afraid of loud noises. Okay? This dog has to have steady nerves to perform any of the tasks. That he, is, that he is set forth to do. These are some pictures of some of the dogs that <coughs> worked through time. <coughs> and he's our best friend, okay? That's, maybe that's the most important job he has Because for most of us, the dogs are our companions. We're gonna first discuss structure. So I'll let Sharon go over a little bit of this while I drink some water. <laughs> I can talk. Okay. I am a German Shepherd person, but I also have been heavily involved in all these shows for a lot of years. I'm very passionate about adhering to the breed standard. The standard doesn't always say you must, you have to, but sometimes the adjectives are very important if they say this is desired or um, it would be best that there's all kinds of ways to talk about the breed standard. And this is a breed that is absolutely 100% about harmony of motion and uh, athleticism. <clears throat> the first impression, this, the first sentences in any breed standard are very important. They should be agile, strong, well-muscled, alert, full of life, well-balanced, harmonious. It goes on to tell you their proportion. So it gets down to silhouette. Uh, Lang Scarter was one of my mentors. He used to tell us when we were kids, look at them out of the corner of your eye as they go around. If something sticks out, it's probably wrong. That means if something catches your eye, the tail, the front foot off the ground, the hind foot's not following through, if it catches your eye in silhouette on the go around, take another look at it, it's probably wrong. Okay. <clears throat> this is desired height. I was just talking to a breeder outside and she said, well, it's not a fault if they're too, too small or too large. This is, this is what we're supposed to breed to and pay attention to. The top of the male standard is 26 inches. That's two inches shorter than a male dog special. 26 inches is two inches of under what the dog standard calls for. And you look in a lot of the rings and the shepherds are bigger than the Doberman. So you need to pay attention. The, the bottom of the bitch standard is only 22 inches. Kerry blues say 19 inches, so 19 is a Kerry blue, 21, 22 is a shepherd bitch. They don't have to be huge. They should not be moosey. Our standard talks a lot about masculine and feminine, and you should know what they are when you look at them. You shouldn't have to look to see if they have equipment underneath. They should look feminine. They should look masculine. <coughs> they are longer than they are tall. Here's a dog and a bitch. There's no doubt in your mind when you look at these two pictures, which is the dog and which is the bitch. <coughs> 
figures. The Audrey people are always asking me, well, how wide should the back skull be? Well, how long is the head? Lang used to tell people they need one to eat. Now, we've come a long way from that. We want a, a pretty face. We want a proper eye. It tells you about parallel planes. <clears throat> it's just slightly <clears throat> arched. The expression should be keen, intelligent, composed. The muscles long and strong. How long? Doesn't tell us how long. Doesn't tell us how short. <clears throat> the top line <clears throat> is parallel, parallel planes, back skull to nose. The nose is black. A dog with a nose that is not predominantly black must be disqualified. We have blue in our breed, and their noses are grayish, dark, dark and grayish, and they usually have yellow eyes, they usually light. Um, I, I don't think I've ever had a blue come in my ring all these years. I, I don't think I've ever seen one in the ring. I've read one, but I've never seen one in the ring to judge. So if one did come into your ring? I said none of it have ever come in my Right, ring. but if one, say one did, what would you, would you just want? What well, it says it's a DQ. Yeah. You, you, know, you have to live by the same. The color itself is not the DQ, it's the it's nose. The nose. Mm -hmm. And they have a black nose. They won't have a black nose. When they're born, they have a blue cast to them, you know, and puppies have blue eyes anyway, but as they as they get older, the eyes become yellow. Lang Scarta finished a blue dog, Hooven's Grape mm -hmm. And he was a wonderful dog, and he got tired of getting beaten, and he co-owned it and took it out and finished it. Only Lang could do that. <laughs> <coughs> we have almond-shaped eyes, and they're medium size. You will see eyes that are buggy, that are not well into the skull. Um, if the eye is right, the expression is right. <clears throat> the ears are moderately pointed, they're proportioned to the skull, they're open to the front, they're carried erect. You're not going to see cropped or hanging ears in the ring, you're really not. Most people just know not to bring them. Once they're out of the puppy class, you'll see a dog with soft ears, maybe they're taping his ears, but for the most part, you're not going to have that issue. <clears throat> if you guys aren't accustomed to counting teeth, let the handlers show you the mouth. They know how to do it. Most of the time, you're going to have somebody with a shepherd that can show you the mouth when you bite. You, we have illustrations in the in the uh, pamphlets that show you to look at them in clumps. You're going to look at anterior teeth, posterior teeth. You're going to look at canines. You're going to pre, look at premolars. <clears throat> Any missing tooth other than the first premolars is a serious fault. Undershot jaw is a disqualifying fault. I've never had an undershot dog in my room. The top line is straight. Now people argue with me there's no way a shepherd top line is straight. Well, it says the back is straight. The back is only about this many vertebrae. And we have a very good illustration of the dog with a fairly double back. <clears throat> this standard is not going to tell you these are hard charging, on a tight lead, scrambling around the ring. That is not what our standard calls for. And one reason the, she the shepherd handlers show you that is to hide faults. If they have a tight lead, it flings the front out, it straightens out the back, it squats the rear end, and the dog looks like this going rather than like this going. So <clears throat> most of us who have judged the breed for a while, you come in our ring and we're going to say, go slow, give me a looser lead. We don't want them charging around the ring going 100 miles an hour on a tight lead. <clears throat> May I say something to that? Sure. Sometimes, and we've talked about this before, Sometimes this charging around the ring and pulling too hard and all of that is achieved by double handling. And I don't personally terribly object to double handling. <coughs> However, dogs that scramble and pull and push too hard and are hysterical to get to their owners and extremely focused on that, I look at those dogs, as she said, out of the corner of my eye and go, are these dogs really stable mentally? Are they comfortable in their own skins or do they need to be with their people? It's a judgment call you have to make, okay? There's no hard and fast on this. I'm not gonna say that a dog <coughs> passes my temperament test beautifully, that I'm gonna kick him out because he double handles too much, not at all. But I think if as a judge you call for the people to go slow, to go steady, to give you a loose lead, you're not going to see that charging, rammy, hysterical kind of performance that we occasionally see. 
Not so much anymore, though, do you think, Jim? Do you think that's settled down a little bit? Yeah, it's much better. Really as much as it used you, to be. you always say, make them go slow the first lap around the ring. Jim's always said that you take a lot of the starch out of them if you never let them get cranking the minute they come in the ring. They're going to come in your ring a little lighter, not I'll stop that. Make them go slow in the beginning. It kind of settles them down and, and it establishes that you're not going to put up with it. <coughs> Okay, <clears throat> the ribs are well strung and long, chest <clears throat> commencing at the sternum is fairly capacious, the abdomen's firmly held, the loin view from the top, broad and strong, long and gradually sloping croup, you will see some sharp croups, and the tail should be at rest. Once in a while, you'll see a dog crank his tail up, maybe he wants to bite, maybe he's whipped a bitch, most of the time, the tails are pretty good. The, the croups, you're going to question a lot of croups, but you're not going to question tails that much. <clears throat> Shoulder blades are long and obliquely angled, laid on flat, not placed forward. We all talk about laid back the shoulder. This breed really wants a well laid back shoulder. <clears throat> the forelegs are straight, and the bone is oval. It is not round. If you get the bone going to round, they become too clunky and, and too lumbery and they're not agile. The bone needs to be open. Passions are strong and, strong and springy, and there's a 25 degree angle. The feet are sharp, compact, with toes well arched, pads thick and firm, nails sharp and dark. Feet are not great in this breed as a rule. You'll see feet that you wish were better. You'll see you, some are open, some are a little flat. Feet are, are an issue with a lot of German shows. <clears throat> and I will say this, that I've worked a dog, i worked dogs, multiple dogs, many years in search and rescue, and I saw dogs work all day long, and I saw dogs work with, with poor pads, very thin pads, and you could almost count, if they were on rough terrain, by the next morning, they were sore. In some cases, their pads were bleeding <coughs> at the end of the day. So this, this kind of foot that our standard calls for, this isn't for appearances, this is a functional thing. These dogs need a good pad in order to be able to work and do the kinds of jobs that they were asked to do without causing them pain and discomfort. This is not our most attractive <coughs> slide. It's not our pretty slide. This is a very important slide. We say that the front assembly should parallel the back assembly. Where you see dogs that are so long and stifled and they stand way up behind themselves, this should be, it should be, it should be equal when they're standing naturally. The shepherd handlers wanted to make it that it was equal when they stretched them way out behind themselves. And it made a lot of trouble in the breed. It can never be that way. It can never be. Either. No, no. If, if the cycle is too long, it, these are not. These don't match. And we have a really good picture. <clears throat> this is a Grand Victrix. Look at her stacked, and look at her standing naturally. Now you would never think that's the same dog. That's what a shepherd hammer can do to them. And the breeders go crazy over that. Oh, look at all those angles. She's absolutely correct when she stands on her own. You would not think you could do that stacking them, but you certainly can. Just don't be fooled by that. If you want to look at angles, make them stand naturally. <clears throat> we all know about double working coats and that they protect them from the rain, the outer coats dense. Um, <clears throat> you're, you're not going to, you will see some coated dogs in your ring that are soft with little fluffy ears. They're, they're shown now, and it's just a fault. Yeah, it was never a disqualifying It was never, never a DQ. Never. It's not preferred, but it was never a disqualifying fault. And these are colors. Black and tan, sable, black, bicolor, and white. I was talking with Bob Drescher outside, and we were talking about colors. And colors, he doesn't see colors, and I really don't either. I'll be telling somebody about a dog, oh, it's this, it's that, and they'll say, was it a black and tan? And I, honest to God, can't remember if it was what color it was. I really don't see color. You're not going to see real bad colors. You'll see some paling pigmentation. It's just a fault. You're not going to have any white dogs in your room. All right, here we go about movement. <clears throat> it says it's outreaching, elastic, and without effort. That is not scrambling around your ring going 100 miles an hour. That picture of that Grand Vickers that was standing naturally, 
that bitch does it so easy, and she's got such harmony of motion. She looks like she could date from here to California back. I mean, she just, it's so easy for her because it all works. They should not look like they're working hard. It's not a quick gait, it's not fast. It's an easy, harmonious, athletic movement. It should be smooth and rhythmic. When they're pulling too hard, you'll see them popping over the loin. It, they may straighten the front part of the back out and the, and the rear end's jiggling all around. So you're gonna wanna think about going slow and a looser leg. <clears throat> the feet should be close to the ground. You don't want them popping up in front and you don't want them dragging behind. They should finish behind the dog and the hawk should go off a vertical. The hawk should go all the way back and finish close to the ground. There was a point in time in our breed when um, many of our more, more popular dogs were excessively angulated in the rear and we had a lot of issues in the hind quarter. Breeders have really recognized the error of the ways they are straightening this up and I think the hind quarters particularly <coughs> have improved significantly in the last several years. However, the last several shows I've judged, I've still seen an alarming number of dogs who drag the, who drag the rears, who are not clean with the follow through. So I think that's an area where we still need to do some work. You could hear them sh 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 yeah. on the ground where they're dragging their toes. Mm -hmm. That's that's not good. Do you understand about follow through? They should come off of the vertical and finish behind. That stroke should finish behind, but close to the ground. Uh, they trap, this is a single tracking breed. They don't double track. Well, at a very slow speed, they might start to double grip, but they want a single track. And the hind feet pass beside <coughs> and in front of the back feet, but never in a crab-like motion. It's never that way. It's always this way, straightforward. <coughs> Transmission. Typical smooth flowing gates maintained with great strength and firmness of back. <coughs> At full trot, the bat must remain, remain firm and level without sway, roll, whip, or rope. Unlevel top line with, with withers lower than the hip is a fall. You won't judge one other breed that moves like a German Shepherd. We are unique. We, we move like a Shepherd. We don't move like any other breed. And we want harmonious side gait. It does not have to be flying, open, crazy side gait to, to be an athletic, harmonious motion. They don't track on... Do you want us to wait to the end for a question? You can ask now. You can ask. So, the, so, the, so I think this is why some of the people who don't know Shepherds well have a, have a problem. Like in my breed, when they overreach the back to the, from the front... What is your breed? It, Borsal. It's, Borsal. It, it's a big fault. But mm -hmm. on that picture, you guys, you, you have that. It is correct. And so it's correct for it's you. It's correct for yes. The next picture shows some wonderful gating. Okay. These are some very nice side gating pictures. And the first uh, the first picture you see, see how that hawk is well off of the vertical. It's back behind the dog and it's very close to the ground, not picking his feet up high. These are very pretty side gating pictures. And you can see that the, the hind leg comes beside of and in front of the front leg. Does it come on the outside of the belly or the inside of the belly? Well, it depends on which direction they're going, whether they're on the left lead or the right lead. Oh. <laughs> okay, we're going to talk about temperament. Um, of course, this, this one's near and dear to my heart. This is Hatter. Um, this was when he won Westminster, and he had just competed for Best in Show at Madison Square Garden with a bazillion people. and. Jim had put him on a sit stay and he was walked over and he was talking to, I don't know, the judge or reporters or somebody. And this dog sat there with all these reporters flipping and, and doing all of their their flash bumps going off and all and he sat there because Jim had told him to stay. Absolutely okay with himself and um, happy as a clown. Um, you don't have to chase them up a tree to prove they have bad temperament. Very often they have really worked on it not to move their feet for a loose lead temperament test. They'll stand their ground, but they look at you and they give you this sad look. <laughs> you don't have to spook them to prove that they're not sound temperament. You're gonna know. You look at them, or a dog won't, won't notice you. He's doing this, trying to find the double handler. Well, turn him around the other direction. 
make him face that way because the double handlers may be over here. They'll call him for you to do the loose lead temperament test because he'll focus on the owner and he'll keep his feet still and maybe not spook from you. So it's important. I like for a dog to at least notice I'm there. You know, they don't have to come up and lick me and want me to pet them, but they at least have to have to say, oh, okay. You're, and they can look away, but it's nice that they know I'm in the ring. With a, with a tough dog, though, you probably don't want to make him lock eyes with him. Okay. <laughs> it's probably best not to do that. This is also part of the standard that is like so important to me. And I know, I know I have put up dogs that probably did not have good temperament. I know I can be fooled, but not a whole lot. <laughs> okay. Uh, temperament is, is universal, it's, it's the most important thing about our breed. Our breed is a working breed. This breed should be able to do with superb confidence and great ability any number of jobs from being a therapy dog at the hospital and allowing people to clumsily hug and pet him to going out and, and taking a bullet and saving human life. This, this dog should be able to do some task well. Not every dog can do all of those things, but every German Shepherd dog should have the mentality, the desire to please, and we cannot assess that in the ring. Um, there is no way, I love these critiques, I love a critique, this dog exhibited wonderful temperament, it did not. What it exhibited was the ability to be social. Our temperament test is very little more than the friendly stranger test in a temperament test. And it sure as heck better than nothing, and I totally, totally go along with it, but it does not <coughs> assess true temperament in the, in, the, in the dog. This is assessed by breeders. The breeders have to know what they're dealing with. So okay. you're talking about character and courage. Char character, courage, temperament, biddability, all of those things the breeders have to assess. We in the ring, in the short time we have them, you're can able. only assess if the dog is sociable, approachable, okay? Not exhibits, exhibits confidence, mm -hmm. okay? Exhibits, con exhibits confidence, is not tail tucking, shy, ducking and bobbing and weaving, trying to keep its eye on its owner at all times, just in case, you know. <coughs> Those dogs, like I said, I'll turn around from the other way. Sometimes they're just fine. Sometimes it's a people problem, not a dog problem. Yeah. yeah. You and of course, you know, if they try to bite you. Also, around. some of that head ducking is them trying to see past the judge for the double hammer. Oh, that's exactly. what I just said. I said okay. I'll just turn them the other way yeah. and yeah. see what happens. Because sometimes okay. it's a people problem, not yeah. a dog problem when that happens. So when you're judging them, you have to be a little bit smart and see if the owners and the assistants of the handlers are causing as much problem as the dog might have, because sometimes that is the case. But you do want the dogs to exhibit social ability, and that's about all you can do. Do you have anything to add to that? Do you have anything to add to that? No, just common sense. Yeah, common just common sense. sense. Yeah. yeah very and honest. if you're suspicious, <laughs> Just watch it later on in its reactions when, when you're not really looking at it. Um, Sharon and I talked about this time, about this some time ago, is that half the time when you're if you're standing at the ring gate and I come in, you'll see if, if you're going to have a problem or not. Half the time you know. <laughs> Mary Ellen? I just wanted to draw attention to the end of the second line and the third line in the top paragraph. Yeah. And that the judges should not do what we have some specialty judges do, going up and thumping the dog. Yeah. And, and they don't like that. And there's a certain aloofness, and they can be completely stable. But if you start doing that, they're like, you know, who are you? Some I don't are like that's a good that. way to get bit. Yeah, it's <laughs> a good way to get bit. Yeah. <laughs> but I, but I, you know, you can you can stroke most of the dogs. You can it, you can tell. You, mm -hmm. you should be able to tell. I can bump them on top of the head and go on. You, you, you'll get a feel for it. There are Nothing breaks my heart more than than having a beautiful German Shepherd dog and you go to approach it and you can see that it's not going to go well. Yeah, I, that breaks my little heart. Yeah. And, uh, you, you see a complete lack of it. Uh, they may be double and hard and they're like this and then they t decide to look at you and you'll just see this. Like kind of a sad look. <coughs> and I think in, in, I've been judging German Shepherd dogs for a really long time, really long time. And I think in all those years, I've had two dogs that actually wanted to bite me that were what I call civil, that were actually bad, badasses, okay? Every other time, if that happened. A tough dog? A tough dog, a tough, a tough dog. dog. Yeah. Only twice, only twice. Mm -hmm. so. um, I'm sorry. I didn't no, know you're good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bolts and DQs. Mm -hmm.
an unlevel top line that's just the fault. But I gotta tell you, I have a really hard time with the bad top line. The silhouette's not right for me. That's something I'm pretty hard on is top lines. Uh, the crab like locomotion, if the dog is uh, the body sideways out of normal straight line, <coughs> you're not gonna wanna put that up. Uh, overshot or undershot, uh, overshot or level. And speaking of level, the last two shows I've judged, I've seen an alarming, alarming number of level really? bites. Really? Alarming. I haven't seen, you know, undershot, and I haven't seen really overshot, but a lot, a lot of level bites. Shepherd people get really upset about missing teeth. They really do. They, <coughs> they would really like to have a full mouth. And other than the first primo, which is a serious fault, and shepherd people that they won't breed to a dog with a bunch of missing teeth and they won't campaign a dog with a bunch of missing teeth. It, teeth matter a lot. The pale washed out colors and blues and livers, you're not gonna see liver in your ring and you're probably not gonna ever see a blue. You will see some pale and washed out colors. Um, a lot of the handlers help that, just know that. Um, deficiencies of character, shyness, <coughs> nervousness, and timidity. This is a catch-22 with our breed. We want to take a really well-bred dog that we like to a specialty. And we know he's going to gain more than he will with an all breed. So you don't teach him nice manners. You don't teach him to honor the door. You don't teach him to behave himself. Because you want him where he'll go around the ring a whole lot and win a specialty. Then you try to take him to an all breed show, and he has no manners. And he, you're, you're in a smaller ring and the dog's misbehaving because he thinks he's supposed to go charging around the ring like he's trained to do at a special. It's a catch-22 with our breeders, our handlers, and our breed. They, we were talking to one of the handlers today and I said, if we would make this a loose lead breed, all of these problems would go away and you could train them. But they hesitate to slow them down much because they can't win a specialty. And that's something the breeders are just gonna have to try to figure out Maybe they're only going to come to all breeds, and maybe they're, they're, you know, that's why some of our top winning all breed dogs have never even gone to a to a national because they're too well trained. They won't get in the ring and fly around the ring 30 times. So just know that when you see one, if it's really pretty, if you like the outline, and it's genuine and doing this, it might enter your mind that that's a specialty dog, and forgive it a little bit. And I'm not talking about the crazies with the eyes glazed over and the tongue down the hill, but just think about if, if they're really pretty from the side and they're a good specimen, that might just be a specialty dog in your all-breed It breed should also be pointed out that some of our top winning all-breed dogs and best in show dogs actually finished at specialty, specialty shows and did so slowly. They didn't just drag themselves through to the finish, they finished they finished easily. They finished handily and, and especially, and then they were trying to come Clever together. trainers and handlers trained them and made them behave, okay? And I heard one, I heard one specialty breeder actually say to me, I don't know what happened to that bitch. She was beautiful when I saw her in Canada, but now she's just an average mover. Well, guess what? She was never an average mover. She was always the same mover she always was. It was the presentation. Okay. It was it was never that the animal changed miraculously. Okay. We really care about motion and we really care about character. Those are two things that are near and dear to every shepherd person's heart. The DQs, the crop of hanging ears, you're probably not ever gonna see that. Uh, you will see soft ears in a puppy maybe. The nose not predominantly black, undershot jaw, dog tail, white dogs, any dog that attempts to bite the judge. Okay. Final thoughts. Vicky really matters to her from working with crew working dogs most of her career. Really matters to her for the character and the trainability and, and the they they you should be able to teach a shepherd to do almost anything really. They really if they're a good character and they're they have courage and they're level headed, you can teach them almost any task. I'll bring that bring that up here. That, that, that's my oops. Well now where'd you go? You lost it. Okay. <laughs> I think that this that this sentence sums up the brief. Oh, oh, oh my gosh, where'd it go? You broke it. I broke it. Well, anyway, whatever. 
Um, the, the picture with the working dogs, these are working dogs. We must never, ever forget that. Um, years ago, when, when the dogs were so extreme, I, I never totally bought into that, although I put up a few that now I probably would not. Okay. But I, I also ask myself, if, if I had a 36-inch jump at the ring gate, could the dog get in to compete? Does he have that kind of musculature? Does he have that kind of agility? Does he have that kind of nimbleness? <coughs> Is he sound enough to do it? I mean, I've seen a few few dogs probably couldn't jump the curb. Okay, so that would be that would be a negative in my book. <coughs> and when you start talking about this is not judging, this is not judging, but there's so many things that go into what makes a German Shepherd dog. Okay? They should have the males should have libido, the bitches should have libido, they should want to be bred. This should be a hearty, natural breed. You should be able to put food down and they'll eat it. Okay. <laughs> um, they, sh they should be dogs that want to live, want to thrive, and want to work. Okay. And when you're looking at a dog in the ring, you should be looking for a dog with that look of nobility, with that, that calm, um, but yet lively, that, that look that says, I can do it all and I'm here to help you. I like the phrase okay. that says, difficult to define unmistakable yes. when present. When you see it, you'll know. When it. you see it, you'll think, oh, you know, that one. Yeah, yeah. And when those come into your ring, makes okay. you happy. Oh, yeah, makes you really, really happy. happy. And you also just pray that when you take them down and back and that when you go to the <coughs> women's head, that you're not going to find any deficiencies that change your opinion of that. We've got several top, top judges in this room right now. Um, would any of you like to offer any comments? John, you want to say anything? Jim, you want to say no. anything? <coughs> Mary Ellen? I think it's important that that they take into account not just the potential new judges, but other judges and breeders in here, that males don't move like females. That's true. Men don't move like women. Stallions don't move, move like mares. And I like to think of it as the male is going to move with a more power and the bitch is going to be more fleet. I agree. So I don't like to see a fleet male. He's generally going to be finer boned and well, not I, have... Well, I think we talked about that earlier. <coughs> the male should, should demonstrate good secondary sex characteristics. As Sharon said, you shouldn't have to look to see. But Mary Ellen's absolutely right. It, it makes total sense that... Um, a thoroughbred racehorse is going to move more quickly than a quarter horse, right? Their build is different. Well, a male is different. He's heavier. He's heavier muscled. He's usually bigger. Um, he's not going to move in a fleet manner. Should not move in a fleet I, manner. I see so many times that the bitch goes breed. A good bitch goes breed over an excellent male because she appears so much more fleet. That can be the case. But our our general, standard doesn't call for fleet. Uh, it doesn't. No. It doesn't call for Not fleet in anywhere. Sure. Um, actually, excessive, excessive fast side gate has absolutely no place in any work that any dog has ever done. If a dog, for example, and I do a lot of herding, if a herding dog needs to get somewhere quickly because his flock is getting away, he does not go into a brilliant show dog gate. <laughs> I can tell you that sucker's flying. He's galloping. He's going as hard as he can, can go to get there. That same dog, when he's tending his flock, or when he's moving them, what we call driving, pushing them through different panels, he's going to be slow and relaxed and controlled with his movement. Okay? A police dog, um, that's near and dear to me because I worked with law enforcement in the military for a long time. And I saw dogs save human life, or I knew of dogs that saved human life. I wasn't there because I didn't do fight dogs. But they saved human life. My nephew's a dog handler um, with the Oklahoma City Police Department. And I would hope that if he was in danger, that his dog would have the courage to give his life for my, for my nephews. These dogs, when you ask them to go for the bad guy, they are not gating. Okay. They yeah. do not go into this beautiful. <laughs> I mean, I can just see this guy with the gun going, what the? Yeah. <laughs> no, they're like bullets when they go. Okay? So if a dog has to get somewhere in a hurry, he's going to be galloping. Um, all of the other work that the, 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 that the German Shepherd does, I can't think of anything for speed 
and fleetness of foot is an important attribute. That's kind of an anomaly for our show ring, and it really should not be. We got in a lot of trouble pushing up the side gate, too, let me tell you. There were a lot of years where we couldn't be proud of our breed. People kept the dingy and edgy ones because they'd go a long time. You know, they'd select for, I'm crazy, let, turn me loose, let me run. And that didn't do any of us any good, believe me. So, so this is a breed that should have harmony, should have balance, should have the look of the eagle, should give the appearance of a dog that's got courage, should give the appearance of a dog that's stable and steady. This should, I'm talking in generalities, but that's kind of what we're talking about here is the whole package. It's not just the side gate. It's not just the dog standing. It's not just, it's just not any, it's just not any one thing. And it's not inches. It's not measurements. It, 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 it is a look. We are suggesting that they have the look. I think that's something that's yeah, kind of interesting. Sure. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to, um, the one thing too that I find for people that are new to the breed is that they really need to not just watch where the people, when they first start they to evaluate or breed, they, they try they try to watch the feet know it's reaching. You need to watch, to, for, just for, if you're not sure, don't even look at their feet. Look and see if their shoulder opens. Mm -hmm. The shoulder should open. We have a big problem in the breed still, I think, with dogs that move from the elbow. Move from here. The, the yeah. foot is out there. It looks <laughs> like, I it, saw when you look at the pictures, you can even still see the shoulders, still, the legs out like this, but the shoulders still like this. There's something about that too. I saw a couple of animals today that I thought were absolutely breathtakingly beautiful and that the owners and breeders should be very proud of them. However, having said that, <clears throat> they were extremely upright as they went and kind of popping from their elbows, and that is that is not correct motion. Um, the upright, nothing is prettier than a dog that's extremely upright, but we're going back to the working ability of a dog. A, a dog that goes in for the bite, who's extremely upright, has a really good chance of tearing up his neck. Okay. So I mean, you have to think about those things, but these are show dogs, and I like it too. Okay, but you're right. It, the, the shoulder, the whole shoulder. Well, whether, the, whether their carriage is a little up or, or forward, the shoulder, the shoulder should still, still open. open. It shouldn't be just mm -hmm. moving from the elbow. But I do think we see a lot of dogs that they pull back mm -hmm. and they they bring themselves up in the front and they move from the elbow. Yeah. I think you're exactly. Some of the right. most efficient dogs I ever saw, they put their head out and down a little bit mm -hmm. so the shoulder works. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that the correct way? They should mm -hmm. move forward mm -hmm. rather than yeah. with the head out. Yeah. 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 And the other thing is to look for the feet actually come down. Um, the, the feet should stay close to the ground. They shouldn't be coming. I'll get to you in just a second. Mm -hmm. they, they, it should not be coming up and okay. then setting down back here. It should be just a smooth forward motion. I guess Al, it's, oh, yeah. Al, did you have a question or a comment? How does the dog move from the elbow? <laughs> <laughs> they pop from the elbow. How's that? It comes st straight up. I don't know the locomotives on that. No reason why I asked the question. How do they? Uh -huh. Why? How do they pop from the elbow? Well, they move from the elbow. It doesn't open. In, instead yeah. of this, like a, like a yeah. swimming stroke? At the shoulder. If you, you see this, it stops here. The, 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 soldier the stroke is short, mm -hmm. and it's the short foot's on the ground a shorter time. The foot should stay on the ground a longer time. I'll tell you an easy way to answer him. Yeah. Okay. Ask him if he's ever seen a miniature picture gate. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's a bit extreme. <laughs> well, it's a bit extreme. Same principle. The reason, same principle. Yeah, the reason why I asked the question, because if you... <coughs> The elbow joint. How much direction does it have? Not a great deal of that. No, not a whole lot. Yeah. Is this the elbow joint? Yeah. What is it doing? Up and back, up and back. Up and down. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. When we use when we use the term that dog is moving from the elbow, if the elbow only has a motion of up and up and down, it's up and down moving dog. But if we got to use the correct term. I think that's what Jim just said. Yeah. So if we're using the correct term. The dog, what we what what the dog is actually doing, he lacks full opening of the shoulder, well, which in turn yeah. flexes the elbow to bring it up. Mm -hmm. He's actually not moving from the elbow. He's actually has a shorter extension of the arm of the shoulder because he's not opening it up fully. And when he opens it up to the <coughs> distance that he can, the elbow then flexes upward. We're, we're saying the same thing. We're all saying the same but thing. They always use the term so different. So other young person that find it. They ask me, they ask me, from, oh, how does the dog move from the elbow when the elbow won't go up and down? A lot of dogs do just go up and down. I'm just telling you. A lot of dogs do just go up and down. I always say to people, it's like you're at a quarter horse show, yeah. judging quarter horses. And this time Steve Walker comes in the ring and goes flying around, you're like, wow, that looks really cool. But it doesn't make it a quarter horse. 
<laughs> that's, exactly <laughs> that's exactly Very good analogy. Yeah. 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 Um, one of the things I find with new people in the breed, they read the standard and they see the right angle. And they believe that they, when they're watching the dog gate, they should see a right angle all the time. And that's absolutely false. You talked about follow through in the rear. The only time you see a right angle if, is if the dog is standing with his foot underneath his hip joint. And I think Sharon pointed that out yeah, with the slide. That's when you is see. Is that when you actually see what the angle is? That are. shows. That slide is so important to get that in your head. Yeah. Yeah. And Can that's the only time you see it. You don't see it. What, what time is it, Sharon? Mm -hmm. 4 we we need to do the hands-on, Jim. You've got some dogs down there for Well, I, yeah, but we're yeah, going over to where the show was, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, in the yeah. far end. We're going to bring them all over here. Where the show was. Yes, where the show was. Wait, I, I just want to, just hit one big question. Yes. I always want to get this question out. I probably can't answer. <laughs> I guess you can. There's a lot of judges here. We're going to answer this one today. Yeah. The question is this. When we talk about the breed, we always emphasize motion. I've heard this from being a breed 30 years, 30 years. Motion well, and shoulder. Better in the range. You might want to tell us the whole thing. The three words I think that are missing. Oh, yeah. And the words that are missing when we read the standard is in accordance with. My question is, if I have a dog that has the standard call for the back to be like this, short, the croup at this, the height at this, and then I go over here and I got that dog that's like that, and I have a dog over here that the back is slightly longer, out of proportion, out of, in accordance with the standard. And this dog covers more ground, looks more fluidity. Nine times out of 10, that dog wins. Go out and don't discount desire for how the dogs move. Some dogs have more desire <coughs> than other dogs. And well, it's I'm absolutely true desire. that a dog that's too long covers more ground standing uh -huh. still just by nature of the structure. Yeah. Right, but yeah. well, what I'm saying, not, the, not talking about that, no, what I'm talking no, about, no, if you read the no, point no, of the show, no, the dog that's correct proportion is, then you go to his motion. If he's in correct right, proportion, right. his motion is not as good as it's supposed to be. The dog that's out of the standard with the longer back, who seems to be a little bit more extended, shouldn't beat that dog. No, he shouldn't. He shouldn't. And it happens he, all the time. But it has, it, it's not just motion, Al, and it's not just proportion. I'm going to go around judge, that box and like. There's a lot of things know, that go into judging. I, I so don't understand. It's all about which dog is the closest to the standard. Which dog is the closest to the standard, in your opinion, on that day. I just had a breed yeah. 